the gentrification of the community, the displacement of people, is something that is morally wrong. When I woke up and saw everybody on the street, I was devastated. I didn't know what to do. That's when I realized we just lost everything. Gentrification will affect families multiple times and then they'll move and move and move and move to a new place where the rent might be a little bit more affordable. But in Miami there's literally no place left for people to go. Everything is unaffordable. Now that we had to move, I have to work all the time. I can't study no more. I gotta work 40 to 48 hours a week. I got a scholarship for the University of Chicago and then the Washington one. And I didn't accept none of them because I gotta be here and help my mom. She can't work by herself with my stepdad and pay for a rent that is $2,000. That's without the, the lights, the water, everything, every other bill. La vida aquí es muy irregular. Tuve que conseguir una renta de $2,000. dólares. Para esto tuvimos que unirnos en familia. No sé si yo puedo mantener esta renta un año. O, 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 mi tra o mi trabajo baje, no sé cuándo mi hijo puede retomar sus estudios, no sé qué va a ser de la vida de mi hijo en estos momentos. Entire trailer parks where hundreds of families have been living for generations are having to completely clear out and they have nowhere to go. And trailers, especially in Florida, are some of the most affordable housing options out there because for a full size house, maybe four or three bedrooms, you can have a trailer that maybe costs only about four or five hundred dollars a month. You just can't find that kind of a deal anywhere else. We're seeing a lot of uh, developers, especially condo developers, and lately a lot of uh, rental uh, developers that are coming in and since there's really not that much land available that we can, you know, for development, they're beginning to go into these uh, trailer parks and buying those lands to develop, you know, major high rises ciudad, hablas con el alcalde y te dice no tenemos plan 8, no tenemos vivienda, hay una lista de espera muy larga, pero es que los trailers no fueron subsidiados ni por el gobierno, ni por el condado, ni por la ciudad. Lo pagábamos nosotros mismos. El dueño de la tierra se le respeta sus derechos porque la tierra es privada, es su propiedad privada, pero el trailer es mi propiedad privada y nadie respeta mis derechos, porque mi trailer costó 20 mil dólares más todo lo que le costía porque estaba en mal estado. The thing about Miami is that it's a place of extremes and you have a lot of people who make a lot of money and then you have a working class that makes very, very little money. And these are the people that work in the hotels, that work in the restaurants, that work in the retail jobs, that work the construction jobs. They're just not making enough to be able to keep pace with the cost of living. You have folks that, you know, they have money and they need to invest their money. And they have the opportunity of, you know, finding real estate that's perfect for what they want to invest in. And they just come in and they build these beautiful buildings. That's what we're looking at in, in, in you know, the area north of 836, Wynwood, you know, down Biscayne Boulevard, all the way north, this is what we're gonna see at. There's still some areas there that are poor neighborhoods. Once we see these, you know, investors coming in and start building these beautiful, expensive places, we're gonna see that some of those folks are gonna sell their properties and they move, they're gonna move out. Why? Because they're no longer gonna be able to afford this new, expensive neighborhood. We always wonder, why is Miami such an apathetic place? Why don't people to go out and vote? Why don't they participate in meetings so that we can improve these things? Well, it's because this working environment that people are in, where they're constantly struggling to keep up with the bills, and then they don't have the infrastructure in place so that the bills can actually start costing less. That makes it so that people are always caught in this vicious cycle of having to work in order to survive and not have any time to do anything else. They're always telling you in school, oh, you can be somebody. You can be somebody if you don't have no bills on you. 
Because you know, if you have bills that you have to pay, you don't have time to be somebody. 